Hello and welcome to Campaign Comrades, your favorite largest gaming podcast. I am your host, Ben, and with me, as always, are my co-hosts. What's going on? It's Matt. Yo, 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 it's Andrew. Just the three comrades today. How are we doing, boys? How's our how's our gaming week been? It's been a it's been a you know an interesting one. A uh you know, it's been for me at least it's been tough to to find time for every to fit everything in. But I'm interested in how you guys how you guys have been making making time for our necessary gaming. Oh, my week's been very strong. God of war hit the ground running. I'm really I'm loving it. It's given me all everything I've wanted. The the fighting's great. Scenery. Did you great. grow two inches? Uh, is your facial hair okay. growing thicker? All right, shut up. <laughs> no, damn it. But Kratos. You just haven't is played awesome. enough yet. Yeah, you're right. So you you started uh, the game on stream, Andrew. Have you and you've been able to play more since then? Yeah, I've gotten like. I'm probably six hours of game time in, which for me is a lot of gaming in the like three days. Um, yeah. So that, I, that I assume show. that uh, if you've been working remotely, you've just been uh, like tapping your space bar and then... <laughs> to, uh, to simulate productivity. Yeah. I wish. I am technically still working. I wish, but I have managed to just be like every other minute that I have free, God of War is probably on. I read about a computer engineer who automated his tasks and then to get around the like keyboard and uh, mouse check built a small servo based robot that would just wiggle his mouse and like oh, hit man. three keys. That's, what is my purpose? That's you so overcomplicated. Oh, oh my God. You can buy a little USB that jiggles your mouse for you. I may or may not have one. <laughs> that's sick. That's awesome. Um, I I unfortunately have not had as much time to to do more than you know I, I got I started playing Matt got his copy first but is being you know showing a, absolutely immense self control just the, the true just pain pig the, 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 position, the true yeah. pain pig just just torturing himself his balls are in a vice right now not really <laughs> I mean for a realistic stance like finishing Xenoblade is important and like I'm wrapping up a lot right. of storylines getting a lot of cool emotional beats. Uh, and then I've just got Persona to like dose me until I get to it. I just respect that you're committed to avoiding spoilers. That would be the yeah. Thing it's for just me. like yeah. F- I mean, like I haven't had too much trouble. Uh, YouTube maybe has been the biggest one, yeah. but it's pretty easy to just to just move past. The, yep, move past those. Um, I don't know you as the as the cursed Reddit user of the yeah. group. I don't know how you how that site has been usable at all for you. Oh, uh, well. I go through Reddit purges frequently. Uh, like recently, I've purged myself from the NBA and Knicks Reddit because I need like, <laughs> a, a break from the mental pain. Uh, yeah. So in the same the same vein, I just set up a couple filters that block like God of all War right. and stuff like that. I remember like when all the leaks were happening, people were like posting screenshots to the you know the Balrog of of Morgoth himself, yeah. <laughs> Corey Balrog. Uh, it's, what what is he? Yeah, ba- Barlog. Yeah, Barlog. Yeah. yeah, but I always call him Balrog. Balrog um, Morgoth. And they're like, you know, they're like, will this will this cover it? In the fucking, you have to like they, you know, they're having to post like you know a a, a screen record thing as they're fucking scrolling all the way through the different permutations of filter thing, you know, of, of banned word or muted words they've got to put in and it's fucking insane um no i i found twitter to be very easily manageable without any filters or anything like that have and that's pay, pretty much following exclusively gaming to accounts. A company yet? no 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 i'm not say so yeah, i'm not i'm not a true poster in that regard respect um, respect to whoever brought eli lily stock down that's fucking hilarious the, the eli lily stock one was funny um Someone posed, I think it was as Nintendo of uh, like Palestine or something like that. <laughs> um, Solidarity with Nintendo of Palestine. <laughs> and I think they posted, it was a picture of a pregnant Luigi with Waluigi standing next to him. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, yes that's that. a classic. That's a classic meme. That is a classic meme. We love, uh, we love pregnant, pregnant Mario and Luigi. Yeah, that was, as, as you can see, uh, that's, there's a reason Nintendo pulled their, uh, um what was it ads or whatever yeah. advertisements yeah, yeah, yeah. um yeah that's that's uh that's been it's been incredible to see um 
but yeah, I have, uh, you know, I haven't had too much trouble dealing with spoilers. Um, I, so Matt got his game first. I got mine second. I started playing first, but that was just with the expectation of Andrew streaming and to be able to even engage with the stream at all. I had to make sure I was past the point that I knew he, you were going to get to, uh, on stream, Andrew, but I have not been able to play since. Cause like, I'm again, being a good boy, I have other active games. I was playing. You know, the day after I play, I only had enough time for one, and I played more Mario Rabbids. I'm, om- I'm, you know, the the percentage, you know, says I'm I'm like not even at sixty percent yet, but that's you know, yeah, usually you usually you stuff. finish a story around sixty to seventy percent. Yeah, I'm at like, uh, well, I've been doing like almost all the content, um, you know, minus like major collect like a lot of the collectible stuff, but like I've I'm on the fourth of fifth plan of five planets. Then I think what then you probably have whatever is the finale. So I'm almost done with that. And so I was doing some of that. And then yesterday I was just so busy with work and then uh then had to hop on stream and you know, playing Dragon Age on stream. Folks, come check out Dragon Age Thursdays and Fridays. Yeah, like Wolf Run, whatever. Yeah, Night Wolf Run was uh, like shout outs, shout outs to that, uh, you know, to, to that epic legend. Only he had dropped a follow. It's the best way to support us, folks, is give us a follow <laughs> on Twitch. Um, I thought it was funny. He was, he was stingy out, with it. He was like three chats in, and then Fossbot just jumped in. And was like, "Hey, you should follow." That's why it's on a timer. That's the that's the point. And you know, I know a lot of people don't actually. A lot some people don't do that, but it's you know, you know, see those type of things and like you know, you know, I'm explicitly not going to follow out of spite now. Um, but you know, there are plenty of people you see who just somehow miraculously forget that you can do that forget that you can like you know follow like subscribe all that stuff leave um, a comment folks, you should you should yeah you should do that rate um, us five stars only uh but i'm hopeful that today after recording i'll be able to get in some prime god of war action did um, i'm i'm looking for, I, i've been enjoying it so far as well i've been did, enjoying it a lot did, no, we're not getting into any spoilers here though. yeah yeah no no spoilers did i did i get how close was i to where you ended when i ended stream Probably pretty close, pretty cl- right? Pretty close, pretty close. I maybe like didn't. I was like, uh, you know, because this is just the nature of streaming, right? You know, you don't. You feel like you're. You you have like the, the feeling like you got to keep the pace moving a lot. You know, so I'm literally searching around every fucking corner. You know, every for every upgrade, every piece of equipment, all that stuff. I'm every I'm investigating. Written? Yeah, every path. I've only found one raven. Um, I'm afraid that I missed some. All, all of the Odin's uh, ravens were probably my least favorite part of uh, God of War 2018. Yeah. I mean, because that's again, that's just a collectible thing that I don't really care too much about. But you know, well, so, some of the can... the axe tossing you would have to do for some of them was a really annoying. Like, find the from right what... trajectory and hit it in the yeah. Right window. From what I've seen, from what I've just read and stuff, is that a lot of those those puzzle things are one of the things that have been more fine tuned from from this you know still takes some of that stuff but that's they're more satisfying as as you're lining up to throw the axe you uh pinky to your mouth or you hold pinky up <laughs> when in doubt he's a- uh i uh so i i'll just say thing and this is not spoiler or anything i like basically got just got to the part where uh the quote unquote map opens up okay where you get you get that item where that unlocks the compass. Yep. At the top. That's basically right where I stopped. Um, just after that. Um, so yeah, you got pretty you got pretty close on stream to where I had been. I'm 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 like three hour just over three hours in in my game time. Got it. But I will be hoping to play some more today. Um we've been, you know, vibing off of God of War, but uh obligated to start the pod with a a tribute and perhaps moan of silence to the passing of the late great kevin conroy the real batman the voice of the animated is, series the voice of the arkham all, games yeah all the arkham games like for so many people for so many people he really represents the you know who batman really was you know more than any of the actors in any one way. of my favorite batman movies is his voice uh mask of the phantasm so it is truly a you know a, a tragic loss, you know, gone way too soon. So dealing with you know a short battle with cancer, at least publicly. Um and so yeah, let's 
Let's give a, uh, you know, pour one out for the goat. Moment of silence. Respect to him. We are, you know, we are, we mourn with his family and friends. And, you know, the only thing that we can, you know, kind of take from it is that, you know, he leaves behind an incredible legacy and, you know, has done so much for the fans and can continue to enjoy his iconic performance. Um. So, but then moving into real heated gaming moments, we got to keep things going here. The content never ceases. Um, for myself, at least, uh, I am dealing with the the struggle of you know personal life, you know, moving in to hamper all my different kind of gaming activities. Um, but if at least there's the the comfort that it's not just me, and so <laughs> unlike not not just like you know myself having to take a brief hiatus from my D and D group because of you know got an upcoming move. Around that I just like my my space is taken over by boxes. Who knows when I'll have a stable internet connection that I'll have a, you know, my PC is going to be broken down at some point. But it's not just me who's having to take a, a break from D&D. And perhaps, you know, the what is showing to be the, the best adaptation ever of tabletop gaming that has ever occurred. The the D&D movie has a, has been delayed by several weeks. <laughs> Uh, you know, it makes it, it's true representation there. You know, it's not a yeah, it's not a real adaptation unless it gets yeah, exactly. you know, delayed <laughs> yeah. scheduling conflict. Yeah, I was about to say what happened was they were all ready to go, and then an hour before final film, uh, one of the actors called and said, "Oh, by the way, guys, I can't make it because I've been attacked by a moose." And <laughs> yeah, or just oh, the, the, just the director. Yeah, the, the the director just like yeah, is starting a new project. Uh, you know that uh, is taking up a an unusual amount of time. You know, just got got to shuffle things around a little bit, and then yeah, somebody's unavailable here, unavailable there. You know, but you know, I was maybe like a a little skeptical that this you know movie is going to be a little too Marvelized, and you know, it's not going to be a real you know showcase for D and D. But you know, they're 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 proving my, they're proving me wrong already. <laughs> On, on this you know it, it is absolutely true to the real life experience so you get the, it gets the campaign comrade seal of approval there but yeah it's it's been uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be weird like it's it's gonna be interesting to see when our i mean i'm able to start playing again when i'm able to pick my campaign back up just because you know this is no fault to any of my players it's all Me it's just it's it's <laughs> it's always a challenge in general on a normal schedule, you know, to keep momentum, to keep, uh, you know, narrative threads <laughs> present and, you know, uh, you know, basically to keep them, you know, remembering what the fuck happened last time. You know, I, you we constantly are spending every like, other you know, week. Yeah. And so uh, I, yeah. We, we've been murder on the orienting uh, Orient Express for like yep. three months now, it feels like. <laughs> since we've been on this ship yeah. trying to solve this murder and it's only been like in game like two days or something like that yeah because you feel i feel like you always end up spending like the first 20 minutes at least of the session just recapping yes what happened what happened last time um and then you still have and, the and one player the, who's, the, who, the who's one like an hour in it's like what happened what is it? where are we uh you know so like <laughs> i i have no idea what's going on you know like uh you know who's this npc that we've been talking to for five sessions but see like you you your party has a note taker mine yeah. does not we we have the most the... mine has the most mine has is a is a party uh, uh a party stenographer for how much gold they have <laughs> the important things they, yeah they've got a banker that's yeah. it we we have a party note taker and we've always made the joke that uh like history can be whatever he wants it to be <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> See, like I'm the DM and I barely even take notes. I write, I write at the most brief suggestions in my notebook, and that's well. It. His, his character also has keen mind, so he's at least like in character for that part. Uh, but it's one of those like he'll question something that happened multiple sessions ago, and the DM will DM will be like, "Is it in your notes?" He'll be like, "Yeah," and he's like, "Yeah, that's what happened." And that, that, <laughs> yeah, then, then we'll then we'll go with that. 
I'm terrible with like I'm terrible with remembering NPC names and all that shit. I'm terrible with coming up with NPC names because then I usually just pick something random off the top of my head that's random. stupid and can never remember it. <laughs> yeah, his name was um Tetagris, right? <laughs> oh, you said before it was Tyler. Yeah, Tigris Tyler. It was by both. Bob uh, yeah, Boblin the Goblin. That's, Bob, that's it. Usually Bob something something like that. The best way to go, in my mind. Uh, but so speaking of of uh, you know D and D representation, let's move to some some other questionable fantasy representation that's making the rounds and the stirring up a bunch of hubbub. At least within political journalism, I haven't really seen too many. Most of the fans actually that I have seen talking about it are, you know, they're not being apologetic and, you know, they're in terms of this, you know, they're not, you know, you know, they're not necessarily defending it. They're just being like, yeah, I can't really, I'm not really surprised at, at the, the, you know, what's going on, but it is confirmed that Final Fantasy is Mayo ass. <laughs> Matt, Matt, your thoughts. Always has been. <laughs> yeah, always has been, always will be. Like a- astronaut so, meme. Yeah, so like that. That's my that's my one thing. It's like yeah. So like my where I come down, it's like yeah. Like I I can maybe understand from the you know from a realism point of view of 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 why and say what these fans are normally saying. It's like yeah, I'm not defending it, but I can understand why Japan does this. A relatively you know racially, culturally, ethnically you know homogenized society. Um. But my question has always been, why do they do white people? Why not, you know, say, why not, you know, have it be, you know, you know, you know, Asian or Japanese characters, you know, like if they're going to do, you know, you know, homogenous, like, why has it got to be white people? You know, like it's and in particular, if we look at things like Square, you know, they've never until recently, you know, been too concerned with, you know, appealing to the West, you know, I mean. You look at it from a very like macro perspective. They probably like, well, we have four spoken, so there's the there's the colored for the the year. <laughs> here's Final Fantasy 16. Here's the white for the year, and then they'll probably release like some Japan only game that'll be special. That's literally only re- yeah only released in Japan. Yes, no, but, that, but that's been my thing. major thing. It's like it's like yeah, what's the deal with JRPGs just having a bunch of white people? Um, I've always been kind of confused by that. Um, but, uh, you know, so this was in an interview with IGN producer Naoki Yoshida, um, you know, when he was asked about the lack of diversity in the upcoming Final Fantasy 16, you know, he gave uh, an answer that, you know, he, that he himself said he knew that, that many or most would not be satisfied with. Uh, and he was definitely right about that, at least uh, if uh, if game journalists are meant to be representative of the larger gaming world. His, uh, on his quotes that, yeah, his <laughs> quotes were were uh, at least in in some bits that I read were were or at least in some accounts that were more critical were kind of cut down a little bit. They weren't necessarily. I wouldn't necessarily go so far as say that they were stripped of full context. Or whatever, but I was able to dig up the, you know, I'm not going to read the whole fucking thing. Do it. But like the major bit that was quoted a lot that that then had been that I was able to find the more expanded part of it. Yeah. So uh, he states that our design concept from the earliest stages of development has always heavily featured medieval Europe, incorporating historical, cultural, political, and anthropological standards that were prevalent at the time. When deciding on a setting that was best suited for the story we wanted to tell, the story of a land beset by the blight, we felt that rather than create something on a global scale, it was necessary to limit the scope, uh, to limit its scope to a single landmass, one geographically and culturally isolated from the rest of the world in an age without airplanes, television, or telephones. Valisthea, the, the you know the major landmass and. Uh, in question here was never going to realistically be as diverse as say a modern day earth or even final fantasy 14. Ultimately we felt that while incorporating ethnic diversity into Valisthea was important an over incorporation into the single corner of a much larger world would end up causing a violation of those narrative boundaries we originally set for ourselves. 
And that's like the bit that most of the journalists, you know, uh, were complaining about, you know, it's like, okay, why did you, did you set those narrative boundaries that, you know, you, you get the constant argument of people saying like, oh, you know, it's actually not historically inaccurate to, you know, have, you know, black and brown and, and other cultures and, and ethnic identities present in modern Europe, they existed. Um, if you're going to get into that whole debate, it becomes a whole, a whole different thing. You know, it's like they were still a, you know, a extreme minority. You have cases, yes, of say like, mu- uh, you know, Muslim Moorish rule of Spain. You have the Ottoman Empire. You have, you do have those kind of large political things, but they were still, you know, largely l- localized to their own geographic regions, where in most far flung places, it's still. You, it wasn't that big a thing and that's that's not really i think that worth discussing and i don't really defend yoshida's uh arguments particularly those you know along the lines of you know he says something like the story we are telling is a fantasy yes but is also rooted in reality because yeah giant <laughs> I, giant ice mommy is definitely rooted in reality like uh yeah definitely just haven't so it's like there's the old ones yet friend they're they're real they're out there. Leviathan is real. Titan is real. <laughs> Shiva is real. She's coming to freeze me with her giant ice boobies. Yes, mommy, please. She's still big in this one. I thought they made her smaller. I mean, I think they're all big. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure every single one of them is large. Oh, no. It was Final Fantasy 15 where Shiva was just a normal human sized uh, individual. Ice ice elf lady. Yeah. No, multiple giant, of them, this, like little fairies. Yeah. No, this is giant ice mommy. Um, and it's like, yeah, that shit's totally realistic and believable. So it's like, yeah, the self-imposition of what's realistic and what isn't is kind of... Uh, if the Japanese government is kind of suppressing bullshit. them constantly, the world would have been destroyed years ago. <laughs> <laughs> we must bow down to them. You know, the, the sacrifices they make for us are, I say, are, are not, not to be, uh, you know not to be considered so uh yeah matt well i don't know you said as the real final fantasy head i've only ever played i've only ever played the seven seven remake um i'm not as i'm not as really steeped in the lore in the final fantasy lore but uh yeah i i, I think it's both you know say yoshida's comments are unfortunate and uh you know kind of contradictory and a little stupid um i also don't really care a whole lot that's kind um, of like I didn't notice, and then it got brought up, and I was like, "Oh, yeah, I guess that's how it is." And it's just like, yeah, okay, like, uh, I mean, because if yeah, I mean, the, if they were to, you know, I'm not really a big fan of, you know, say like the token kind of representation either. You know, you have you have one, you know, say black NPC to to you know say to check off that box. Mr. That's Popo. fucking stupid. Yeah, I mean that's 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 not uh, that does not qualify as token representation at all. That is a caricature. <laughs> uh, that is com- that is the completely different end of the spectrum. That's actually racist. Yeah, you heard it here first, folks. Cancel Mister Popo. Can't cancel <laughs> Mister Popo. He is omnipotent. <laughs> they, they had they they had their chances to you know redo him in Super. And they uh, you know, change the animation, they and they and they double down. They're like, nope, he's even more racist now. <laughs> he's even more of a blackface caricature of a minstrel. Oh, yeah, of a minstrel show made Jinx purple. <laughs> yeah, still, still, that one is that one's uh, you know questionable too. But yeah, I mean, it's they're... not like Japanese. Japanese culture has has you know they they've been, you know again not to be an apologist in any way, but it's like. He, they're not at least not being explicitly racist in this one, right? It's just yeah, they're 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 moving from yeah lack of represent uh, moving from absolute caricatures to just yeah no representation. So baby steps, I guess yes, we, we spoke about it. That's how they uh, that's how From Software handled their female uh, employee problem. They were just like, well, we can't stop harassing women, so no more women. So we'll, so we'll have less women. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we can't stop being racist, so only white people. <laughs> That solves one problem. <laughs> um, yeah, I, this is absolutely not going to affect sales of the game by any by any means. Um, yeah, sure, it's a bummer for 
you know, for POC uh, fans and creators within the Final Fantasy sphere. Um, but, you know, it's like the the reality is like that, again, not every game needs to be for everybody. The representation, again, is a larger argument that that I think I think we're at a spot where there is better representation than there's ever been. Oh, absolutely. But it's like, again, it's like I get to the point where it's like when you're when you're when you're not saying it's done. I say I'm just saying we're getting there. Yeah, this is off kind of off topic, but take like the the Netflix show like Bridgerton or whatever, which I know you you have probably (laughs) probably has absolutely no idea what that is. I've only ever seen ads and shit for it, but it's like it's basically it's like, you know, Victorian England or whatever. But all like the major characters, all like the power players are, uh, you know, are people of color. Yeah. You know, so it's it is a like alternate history. It is bringing it. It is a representational version of it, but it still underlies some type of you know, say Western bias type of thing. It's it's still saying that those you know what are still essentially white stories are the only ones worth being told, and that they are they can only be saved by you know just you know force feeding POC into it rather than saying that you know, POC deserve to have their own stories told, you know, and have to have their stories, you know, uh, elevated to the same cultural level, right. And to be, you know, funded and supported, um, but in their own context. Right. And I think that's the, the, what's, you know, more interesting and what's better. And, to, and one, yeah, it's say it's purely more exciting from a content point of view because they're different stories. You know, we've seen these stories told all like how many fucking World War Two movies do we need? And like how many fucking more. Uh, okay. never enough. Wow. If we don't have more of them, how will we ever forget? You know, so I, I don't know. I'm I'm I come down as just like, yeah, representation can be good. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and can make people see feel seen, validated, you know, but like there are better ways to do it, right? Absolutely. Yeah, I think that's a good point. The, that representation isn't just having characters that represent people of color. It's about telling those stories and, and actually like giving them a, a real voice as it just being a, you know, a visual thing. Yep. So that's kind of where I come down on it. It's like, sure. Let final fantasy be white, but let's like, you know, get a, the one, you know, let's get a, like, let's get a black fantasy yeah. story, you know? Or one, the get, one pitfall. <laughs> I don't think that counts. <laughs> I do not think that counts. That's what they're going for. <laughs> the one, the one pitfall they do avoid is uh, they haven't accidentally made all of the bad characters uh, characters of color. <laughs> yeah, all the all the bad, all the you know the protagonists antagonists are all well, white. So, well, typically speaking, ta- in Final we're, Fantasy yeah, games, the bad guy always has white hair. Or like silver hair. <laughs> so like there you, so there you go. Progressive. A- absolutely <laughs> progressive. Yeah. Maybe maybe they know something we don't. Don't trust white haired people. Yes. Ever. Especially if it's like really uh, long. <laughs> you know, you know who else you shouldn't trust? Microsoft. <laughs> oh. I mean, yeah. That's right. Fucking fucking owned. Uh, like there's, you know, we, we talk about it almost every episode, the Microsoft Activision deal, you know, it's the, it's the only news that, that actual, you know, game journalism is talking about. Um, it's just like their, their whole, uh, argumentation around the continued probing of the deal just always rings so hollow. Um, we talked about that, how last episode, how it was likely, and it's been confirmed that the, the your the EU commission is is has elected sorry to pursue that in depth second phase investigation. They've got something like ninety days, and I have it somewhere down here, which would put it at until March twenty third, twenty twenty three, to make it uh, an official decision here. Um, but before we get into all that, it's just like seeing the insider uh bits of within Microsoft is just like you know baffling to me. Um, 
this one thing that like absolutely has ruined my brain <laughs> um, that we get from uh, an actual insider on the ground is the fact that since Microsoft has, you know, historically received better treatment from regulators than other big tech companies, you know, like Facebook, Google, um, they were taken up, they were quote, taken aback and unprepared for this level of scrutiny. I, I and I'm just that. like, what the fuck? Like, this is the biggest tech deal in history, and they're actually surprised. They're, Again, it's like, how fucking entitled can you be? They, you know, Hey, the government sued us back in 1997 for antitrust behavior. Why do we have to go through this again? It, this has been settled. I don't understand. Yeah, it's been decided. Double jeopardy. It's <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Jeopardy. yeah. Like, the Microsoft in-house counsel is basically, yeah, citing that. <laughs> it's like, no, come on. You can't get us for the same crime. Uh but it's just it's it's so it's absolutely astounding to me it's like there has not been a deal worth this valuation ever you know in the industry so the fact that they are you know unprepared for this is laughable is absolutely laughable i can somehow believe it you yeah. know uh because again these people are you know used to being you know are 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 overlords you know so that's like they can get away with what they want right our our lobbyists told us this wouldn't happen i was gonna say are you telling me that people who surround themselves with uh is it pronounced sycophants yeah uh ha have trouble when someone finally says no um but i've been seeing more and more uh insider stuff and obviously this shit goes back and forth of many are saying oh we're you know casting more doubt on the deal uh now but then yesterday i saw something that somebody had upgraded the deal the likelihood of the deal going through mm. you know, again i'm i'm not expecting anything but for this to sail through um it's just maybe gotten the most press out of any major deal because it's the you know it's the biggest one ever you know so you see more and more people talking about it that's why maybe there is a general attitude of skepticism, I would say, like most of these things, most of these deals don't get talked about. You know, there's no press and they go they go through with little to no, you know, problems. We've heard nothing from the FTC since since they announced, which is absolutely, you know, standard, standard bog procedure. <laughs> uh, so I'm 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 definitely skeptical. Of, I'm skeptical of the skepticism. I guess I'll put it that way. Yeah. Um, but I saw some other insiders talking about like, yeah, like the there's a big there's there's some shit going on in between uh, Microsoft and Activision behind the scenes. There's some tension at play there that that's like their their recent cause for concern. Um, it's just surrounding the it's just the whole idea is that the prospect of the deal was, you know, is all about making these games ex exclusive right that like that's the only way that the deal of this size actually makes sense to microsoft is moving all these things into their ecosystem um but you know that's where all the concern comes from from regulators uh, you, somebody said one like head fund hedge fund analyst so you know first sicko <laughs> right there um but said like if you're activision you want microsoft to offer anything forever for free Right, because they want this deal to go through. What ha what the uh, Microsoft is held to doesn't affect them anymore. They they will get their bag, right? And 100%. so th they want they want Microsoft to make as many concessions as possible. They definitely do. A another another uh, executive or yeah, another executive analyst. Uh, so this is somebody from Wedbush Securities. This is their managing director, Dan Ives had said, Microsoft's decision to buy Activision is all about exclusivity. If giving up exclusivity is one of the required concessions, Microsoft is going to have to think long and hard if this is still the right deal for them. Microsoft isn't buying their ass this asset so other companies can use Activision games to the same extent. It all comes down to what the concessions are. But, you know, they are, Microsoft are legally obligated, having, you know, signed the preliminary deal agreement, uh, to use its, quote, best efforts to close the deal and that Activision could sue them if they believe that they have, you know, not met that burden, you know, that if they are, have not done everything possible to make the deal go through. Sure. If the deal fails, Microsoft pays something like 3 billion in a, in a breakup fee, which is nothing to them. Yeah. 
as we've seen by the size of this deal, three billion is nothing. Um, I'd like nothing, sir. <laughs> um, but I don't know. As you're more tied into you know this this world, Andrew, have you what what is the the general consensus you've seen from analysts? You know regarding the the you know the what seems to be every time you know uh, it's like there's a there's an uptick in uh, there's an uptick in the in the investigation or whatever that's not the word I was looking for but like it, there's you know more scrutiny yeah. involved um, but then you see it's like we saw that with like the the Brazil regulators right they're like you know we we have a lot of these concerns there's all these things we need to see more information and then a month later they're like okay we were we were, we approve it with no with no conditions. Yeah, no, I think so. A lot of these things are generally, like you said earlier, they're, they're more or less just rubber stamped and uh, not, there's not this level of scrutiny or uh, press around these deals when they're, when they're smaller. And that's kind of what the industry has been more aware or more prepared for. Um, But I think ultimately all of this is is just hand rigging. Um, a lot of it is just is just because they're actually having to deal with any level of review. Um, and I mean, you look at what the general market thinks, and if you if you kind of take that as a larger view, um, it still believes that this deal's happening. And and it's like that's right, my like this, this too. Like the I, stock, I, the stock price, you know, is is down compared to when the deal was announced. But it's still higher than like it was trading at, and it's just also I think that shouldn't be taken as an account as to why you know as as the actual um, likelihood of the deal going through or not because you know these investors are they spook so easily, you know, 100%. and they and and they fluctuate at, on a on a dime. That's just the nature of of markets. They are exceptionally volatile, and you know prone to wiping out large sums of money in no time at all uh to then recoup it down the line 100%. Um, don't we lo- don't we love this system folks isn't it just perfect and the most efficient it's one we could possibly efficient. ever think of it's the most efficient the invisible hand will save us all um but yeah it's no. not gonna it's not gonna save the 13 percent of of meta's workforce the the 11 <laughs> over eleven thousand employees Jeez. that are losing their jobs after wiping out 700 billion dollars in value and he just Jeez. saw he saw twitter doing it he's like oh this is cool now we can do this <laughs> yeah and speaking of twitter we know it was the joke we know the joke was like elon doing the destroy your company speed run challenge but like he's actually doing it. He's he's gonna do it, folks. He's gonna do it. He's gonna kill the bird app. Uh, he's gonna you know, then. He, uh, he's then gonna claim that was the mission all along, and that uh-huh. burn forty four billion dollars is just fun. I mean, hell, hell, it's allowed him to liquidate so much of the absolute vapor that was uh, Tesla stock. And Tesla stocks down now too because of it. He's fucking it all up. Oh, he, so he but he got he got his he bank. sold. He oh got, yeah, he he got his money, and then everything else is down. And uh, but yeah, uh, solidarity to those eleven thousand employees. Um, you think that uh, they were forced to put their um, MetaQuest Pro headsets on, you know, into uh, <laughs> Zuck's fired virtual uh, firing? <laughs> office i don't know he did it he didn't do it that way that would have been hilarious and on brand now he did like a a video thing and i'm convinced he did the he did the shit where uh you know he took like you know from the hollywood playbook you know the fucking ipecac or whatever fucking spray that they spray in their eyes to make them cry because it's like his 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 eyes were like were you know kind of like raccoon you know it's just like like basically he, someone had punched him in both eyes before coming on. It's like trying to simulate sadness. <laughs> they, they sent out two versions of the video. If you weren't being laid off, they sent out a happy video of him uh, <laughs> saying that you've been chosen to stay on. Yeah. Yeah. You are, you are the chosen few, but yeah, the only f- in terms of this deal, I think it's, I don't think, I still think it's happening. I, I would not say this is going to be actually stopped by regulators, at least not in the U.S. I could see maybe some somewhere, maybe the EU actually does something, but but the U.S. isn't stopping this. 
it, it's it's really going to come down to those two. You know, those are the ones that could actually yeah really throw a wrench in it. Um, Microsoft did release a statement about the you know the EU probe, um, saying you know they're continuing to work with the Commission um, uh, on next steps and to address any valid marketplace concerns. You love that. You love that introduction of the word valid there. <laughs> um, uh, it continues. Sony, as the industry leader, says it is worried about Call of Duty, but we've said we are committed to making the same game available on the same day on both Xbox and PlayStation. We want people to have more access to games, not less. So the little bit of self negging there that they're continuing that that strategy, which I think has been working for them. You know, they are they are the like the biggest tech company on the planet. I mean, uh, they've got like the largest market cap, and they are still able to paint this narrative of you know they are a, they they are struggling yeah, to get the by. underdog in in the animal kingdom uh to survive an encounter <laughs> you should roll over and expose your belly and be like no i'm submissive don't hurt me this is all that's all microsoft's doing <laughs> you never show signs of weakness you never show signs of weakness that's just they're gonna allow the vultures to come in and get you like here's here's what's gonna happen. This deal's gonna go through, and their concession will be that they have to make Call of Duty on on PlayStation for like the next five years or something like that, and that'll be it. Because that's all they're that's all they're even talking about is is Call of Duty. Which again, we've we've vocalized that that's really not even the main reason Microsoft wants Activision. Microsoft wants that sweet sweet mobile candy, and uh, they want the mobile candy, and they want the library. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. It's all. It's all that, about. It's they, all about how, the, how they're able. The sexual harassment going on at Blizzard was. Like, <laughs> oh boy, I want some of that. <laughs> but it's, yeah, it's literally like they are future looking to see. I mean, sure, Call of Duty just had its you know best you know release in franchise history, nearly a billion dollars in a weekend. Um, absurd, absurd levels of money right there. It is a money printing machine, no doubt about it. That is part of it. Um, but it's like they are more future thinking in that part uh, because, you know, they are like, Matt, you're the one who has stressed it time and time again, is that they are the ones who are willing to and are able to operate at a loss following the Amazon model to fundamentally reshape what the market looks like, what the industry looks like. Yeah. They are, you know, they are they are good enough to downplay what uh you know they're that's that's again totally on purpose and totally clever on their part to be like yeah you know cloud cloud based gaming is not you know isn't the future <laughs> wink 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 game pass is just barely profitable wink wink yeah. wink 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 <laughs> nudge nudge wink wink uh you know that but that is this is all this deal is all about burgeoning their their uh you know their stake in the actual profitable marketplaces and where it stands now, that's mobile. Uh, that's that's their that's their current play, right? That's for the immediate future. For their long term, it is about shifting the market in general. Yeah, pay pay no attention I mean, to the all of the investments and positioning we've made within our company to pre- specifically dominate the uh, game streaming and you know less console required gaming industry that. That isn't the future, though. Don't. Definitely not the future. I mean, if you get a normal gaming catalog onto phones, there are so many more phone users on this planet than there are anything else. Yeah. And that's the thing. They want they want the, and if the it's Activision based, Blizzard catalog. It's need to be a good phone. Yeah, they want that Activision cl- uh, Blizzard catalog to make all those things into mobile make mobile versions uh you know we already saw how how much money fucking diablo immortal made oh, you know so absurd much. amount of money oh god so that is that is obvious to us but yeah it's just the i definitely think that the the concerns that these regulators find themselves falling into is definitely myopic in in their perspective and that's i think largely because these regulators are fucking dinosaurs and have no absolute you know absolutely no idea what you know the the video game landscape is like that's by design oh absolutely um the uh so you said like oh yeah like uh you know this is the future um 
Are you ready for the future of FIFA? Are you ready for the the, <laughs> the blockchain the, futures here? Yeah, web <laughs> web three web three FIFA is here, and boy, do these games sound so much fun. FIFA has uh, announced all their you know simulation games coming out uh, post the breakup with EA. Uh, Was this blockchain have... built with slave labor? <laughs> Say I don't know about that, but they are these these FIFA Sims are getting even more realistic. You know, embracing the naked corruption of its yeah. namesake organization. Hundred percent. They have uh, they have announced four games, four games, folks. Let that sink. <laughs> uh, they are you know, say all of them are going to be Web three blockchain titles. I've got the names and descriptions of them here for you. Um, I've poisoned my brain. Time to poison all of yours. This is uh, the the first one. First one. Oh. AI League <laughs> FIFA World FIFA World Cup Qatar 2022 Edition, developed by Altered State Machine, which is a quote four on four casual football game played between AI controlled characters with player input at fun and tactical moments. <laughs> Does that sound like a game to you? <laughs> oh I, wish viewers, I wish viewers, I wish viewers could see Matt's God. face as as just the wheels are turning. And it's just like how again? It's like how is that a game? Like that? Answer me that question. Like wh- it's like literally the games are playing themselves, folks. Yeah. Could you ask for anything more? It's like you you could you say you're making money as the games play themselves. Now you don't even actually have to make it a job. You've got to dedicate <laughs> some screen and processing space to it. That's, That's such it. a dangerously close equivalent to just fucking gambling on ai sims <laughs> I mean, that's what all these things are basically uh the this the next one uh, is, i just like wait i just like that it's not even it's not even actual like football or soccer it yeah, is it's four, four on four, on four. <laughs> like and you get to take over at opportune moments so what like <laughs> when they get to take a shot like you get to like yeah, control you press the X. shot and like you get to control <laughs> the goalie <laughs> Oh my god! Yeah, you're 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 doing uh soccer practice. Yeah, that's that's what you're doing here. Uh, so then you got FIFA World Cup Qatar 2022 in the Upland Metaverse, which is a collaboration with Upland Me, a blockchain metaverse where players buy and sell virtual properties. <laughs> The FIFA collaboration will let players collect official FIFA World Cup digital assets, including legendary video highlights of the tournament, and travel to a virtual World Cup Lucille Stadium and Village to shop for digital items. I like that this is literally not even a game. No, no almost, I, I don't can, think any of these are. I, I can just At least go the first to one has an input. <laughs> I can just go to YouTube and pull up the, the highlights of the game. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, but are you? I mean, actually, metaverse? probably not. Probably not anymore. You know, FIFA. You know, again, it's an absolutely bl- uh, nakedly corrupt organization. So, you know, they're gonna like. What do you think they're gonna sell those those streaming rights if you can if they can charge? Just, you know, do I just have to prove that I've used certain amounts of money in, in my life and I get them for free? <laughs> so yeah, if you if you contributed to the you know yeah the production of their stadiums in you know 150 degree heat and 100 percent humidity i just love the fact that they have open air stadiums that are so hot that they need to have air conditioning pumping onto the field which is just a whole level of like energy fucking bullshit yeah like oh we're gonna dump the waste energy into the hot air surrounding the stadium while also dumping all of the good air energy that we're putting into the open air as well so we are just wasting massive (laughs) amounts of electricity (laughs) Good times. Good times. Number three uses a word that I am <laughs> going to try to pronounce. Good luck. FIFA World Cup. P- FIFA World Cup Qatar 2022 on f- on Figital. 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 <laughs> Stay careful there. Uh, P H Y G T L. A mobile applic- a fan engagement mobile application is what that is. The game's description claims that fans can augment a Golden Globe football from the palm of their hands into their real-life environment. 
own a limited fragment of it to attach and eternalize their handpicked <laughs> FIFA World Cup pictures and video moments. <laughs> this is, in FIFA's words, a digital representation <laughs> of eternal fandom. <laughs> so you can own a piece of their souls forever. <laughs> you choose what happens to them in the afterlife. Oh my god. Eternal. Are they damn so are funny? They, are they cursed to eternal damnation or not? Eternalize until this all On goes, the blockchain. goes belly up in literally like six months. <laughs> so the the main takeaway of that one is it's in, you know, the when you go online shopping, a lot of those now have AR where you can like float the thing yeah, into yeah, yeah. your living room yeah. to be like, oh, does that yeah. couch fit? Which is somewhat useful. It's yeah. not but doesn't work is, very this well. Is a, but this like, is an it, AR soccer ball. Yes, or like but... the trophy or whatever the fuck it. Yeah, oh my God. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so this is this this is specifically targeting the people who identify with the the uh, Timmy Turner's dad meme, where it's like this is where I'd put my trophy if I had one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Man, that show was Engelberg. My favorite part of I, that I show lo- was the Dimsdale Dimmodome and its owner. I was going to say, Doug I love. I- I love seeing at at cons and stuff, you know, people with ridiculously large hats. Is that Doug Dimmodome, so, owner of the Dimsdale Dimmodome? Quick, quick aside, went to a Halloween party, and uh, there was a girl who was Doug Dimmodome. I've seen she, I've seen uh, Halloween pictures on Reddit of girls dressed as Doug Dimmodome. It was awesome. give me her give me her number it was ASAP. Awesome. It was it was her hat was taller than herself if when yes. she took yes. it off. It was yes. spot on. Yes. <laughs> Is that Doug Dimmodome? Uh then we got our final one here, which is not far off from the first one. Um, match day challenge, FIFA World Cup Qatar 2022 edition. According to the press, this is a highly engaging <laughs> casual social prediction game based on football cards. <laughs> Highly engaging, <laughs> highly engaging and casual are are is a contradiction in terms, is it not? Yeah, <laughs> dude, this is wild. I can't believe this is what they chose to do with with their life. I mean, I'm totally on board, right? I'm totally on board with them doing this to like see them implode. You oh, know? it's hilarious! You know, again, to vote for their failure, you know, like we we love to see it happen. Man. Yeah, I'm he just was like, yeah, petty. what are you? Yeah, was like, what what are you gonna do better? And then they're like, this. <laughs> God damn. We want to release four separate Qatar World Cup games that if combined would it still suck. Oh. I would say that's the only actual bad loss that you get from the, the breakup is no actual world cup edition of fifa yeah now i always enjoy those want to but collect like the qatar world cup edition of fifa and put it on my shelf you know i don't care about you know the location it's more about just the, the focus and modes on you know the national team stuff was was always kind of fun but um man these are just these you, you can't make this shit up this is really funny really good we love to see it Listen, they're just building a community of fraudsters because that's the only people that'll be using any of this. So they're they're bringing their people together. That's you know what FIFA's about in the end. Yeah, building community. And hell yeah, if they're gonna be defrauding each other, sure. Go for it. <laughs> yeah. You know that's you know, what harm is actually being done besides all again yeah the energy waste and the you know say burning down a portion of the rainforest yeah. to, val- <laughs> to, val- to validate your you know your your football card on the blockchain validate your one highlight from when your team lost in the finals yeah <laughs> so you know that's a uh, you know a, a very bad but funny story. Unfortunately, we've got to move to a bad and uh, and depressing story. Actually, a couple stories that are both uh, unfortunate and uh, you know paint some you know disturbing pictures of various uh, you know studios and and you know just the are emblematic uh, largely you know of the video game development cycle you know in general. Um, 
we've I think talked about it mainly on stream. I don't think it has made it onto the pod yet, but there's been, you know, back and forths and public statements and open letters and stuff being written by the original creators of the uh Disco Elysium. Yeah, the the high the highly regarded and fan favorite RPG Disco Elysium. Um they the original creators have in their latest medium post have accused uh Ilmore Compass and Tonus Havel, two Estonian businessmen businessmen who uh had bought out controlling interest in the studio from the creator's original silent partner and backer. They accused they had done that through through fraudulent means. And it was through this that, that is what eventually led to their uh, their dismissal from the company. Um, in their statement, they they these creators say we believe the money used by. I'm not going to try to pronounce the company, but the company that you know represented these two businessmen in the purchase. That the money used by that uh, organization to buy the majority stake was taken illegally from the studio itself, money that belonged to the studio and all shareholders, but was used for the benefit of one money that should have gone towards making the sequel. They back this up by stating that one of these guys, Tonus Havel was already convicted of defrauding investors in 2007 in another venture. Uh, You know, so lending credence to their claims. Um, They went on, they further went on to state that once, you know, this purchase was made and they were almost that they were almost immediately shut out of daily operations they had their access shut off and then were terminated all after they had attempted to obtain, you know, documents concerning the financials, you know, in a way of potentially, you know, preserving their, you know, their vision, their status, you know, fighting back from what, you know, what they saw as, you know, a kind of hostile takeover of this, you know, instead of say this is a left, this was like a leftist collective, basically video game organization of creators and, was uh you know the game itself you know is is highly regarded amongst leftists it has very good politics um uh so you know it's it's you know really been people you know and the fans were really sad to see that these you know creators who were so pivotal to the creation of the first one had been you know basically summarily removed terminated from their positions lending doubt to uh you know any faith that the sequel would be any good of recent updates the the studio itself under the direction of these two new investors one of whom now serves as the ceo um has come back on the, that same day with their own claims they made a statement to i think it was game industry up is um they stated that these developers were fired for quote creating a toxic work environment and misconduct in interacting with colleagues that included verbal abuse and gender discrimination. They also made uh, accusations that they att- that these two attempted because it's made there are three exact or three of the creatives who were removed. Um, only two of them are actually being accused here by the by the the two guys that bought that bought him out. Um, but it says that that these two attempted to illegally sell. To other gaming companies, the intellectual property, with the aim of undermining the rest of the team. Um, yeah, in, a, in an earlier statement, that guy Compass, Ilmar Compass, uh, one of these Estonian businessmen, um, stated that you know them trying that, that the original creators trying to take control of the IP. Uh, he described it as quote delusions of grandeur, which you know you love to see. Uh, you know, an executive who has absolutely no role in creating, you know, the game, you know, make, make such a, uh, make such an assessment. It's like, yeah, th- these people actually had nothing to do with the process. Um, yeah. It, they, you know, then, you know, doubled down on that saying that the 33 developers in question had, had limited to no engagement in their responsibilities and in work, including not working at all for almost two years while still being paid by the studio and forcing colleagues to compensate for the lack of effort. Um, so it's really kind of shitty to hear, you know, the back and forth with all this, you know, we obviously need to make, uh, you know, take, uh, accusations of, you know, abuse and discrimination seriously. Um, 
I would say I, I am extremely doubtful when those things come from management, right? I'm exceedingly doubtful when, when that comes in. Cause you know, that's just, that just reeks of, you know, executives, you know, being smart enough to, you know, read the, you know, they read the room, they know that, you know, that gaming in general is undergoing, you know, the, you know, the, the is dealing with the ramifications of poor culture. So if they accuse them of creating a poor culture, that should, you know, clear them of any wrongdoing, right? You know, that should be like, oh, you know, we're actually the good ones here. Um, I've only able, to, I only saw one unnamed source claim that, uh, and they basically claimed both sides. They did a both sides, folks. They said there was corporate CEO scheming on one side, a toxic auteur on the other. Yeah. This is, yeah, this is a tough one to parse. I mean, I think, I think if they did, you know, purchase this, their ownership fraudulently, that's definitely its own problem that needs to be looked into and, and determined what truly happened. And, you know, whether these people were creating a toxic work environment or not, those are, those are two separate things and both kind of need their right. own, uh, metting out to to really figure out you know what's going on here but ilmar compass and tonus avil those are strong estonian names i feel like Uh never been any corruption there no definitely not only good things happen in estonia like skype Speaking of Skype, oh. like, can you, like, like, how can you excuse somebody like, you know, getting their bag absolutely stolen like that, you know, primed, primed to, you know, absolutely an, an incredible windfall and then to just have the, you know, the rug completely pulled out from under them by Zoom. You know, this is not an endorsement of Zoom. Zoom has its problems, but like we are using Zoom right now to record this fucking podcast. And if we don't Skype doesn't Zoom, exist. we use Discord. It's yeah, Teams. It's like Microsoft bought Skype and made it Teams. And now it's team sucks. Yeah. Mike at one point like had me download Skype for some reason for streaming and for like interview stuff, but like with being able to do different capture direct captures versus like window shit, but it's like fuck that, that's stupid. You know, I can capture all that stuff, you know, through Discord and you know, just as easily. Yeah. Um so I, I yeah I should probably delete that I don't I don't fucking need Skype down with Skype but yeah it's like <laughs> I have not I have not all I have seen is just you know be, the back and forth between these you know we'll, we can call them two parties you know um, the original creators Both and sides. the yeah that's that's all I've heard you know I have not seen anything come from employees I wouldn't expect you know people to go necessarily uh, you know confirmed on the record I would assume people would do it anonymously. Um, but I've heard almost nothing. You know, it's the one that one thing about the the the, the you know corporate scheming on one side, toxic tour on the other. Um, that's the one quote I've seen anywhere from somebody you know else inside the company. So I don't know where to I don't know where to fall on this. You know, there, there are times um, where it is literally just like bo- both sides are wrong, both sides handled yeah. it poorly. Sure, yeah, that is absolutely a possibility. Um, and often, oftentimes, is a you know, reality, is clo- and is closer to the truth. What I think we can fairly be certain of in this next story, that is not the case. That there is a clear <laughs> villain. There is a clear villain in this I wanna, next. I want to point out that. This is just horrible timing on my part because this is like two years after all this starts and I like bring it up. Was it last podcast or last? Yeah, no, that's why I, that's why I wanted to bring it. I don't know if it was in the podcast. I thought you brought it up on stream it or might something. Have been it up some, Either I way. I think it was stream. You're talking about the Doom Eternal soundtrack yeah. or something. Because that was the, the information store. provided at the time. And then all of a sudden, like two days later, all this just happens. And I feel like I'm the tinderbox. Oh, right. Yeah, so you were I talking about something like If you're listening, Mick Gordon. Yeah, it's like it was like bringing up the fact that yeah, it's like that Mick Gordon was accused of like you know not delivering yes work yeah. or something. It's like we're like not working for more time, and we were just saying we were still supporting him. We're like yes, king behavior. Um, this yeah, absolutely king behavior. But uh, yeah, the 
it's so it turns out you know that the yeah he he was dealing with some real demons in the in game development are you saying that id the, software who works with bethesda is uh <laughs> They, at the very least, the game director Marty Stratton is a is a literal demon, um, which we'll get to. Um, but yeah, Mick Gordon alleges intense crunch uh, due to mismanagement and multiple fa- failures in payment. So you know he was he was hired to you know do the and to do the the first the, you know the original score for all the levels. A lot of the drama then also revolves around the eventual release of the of the standalone soundtrack. Which, you know, there's a whole bunch of going into this story. And, you know, it's all about like how it was eventually released and like they, they, it's a killer uh, soundtrack, took it, by the way. Not but, it's, to... but it's like that they, but that they took it from him and gave it to like, uh, like the id, uh, head, uh, audio engineer who apparently then put out a substandard version of it, you know, that Mick Gordon has said, you know, like that the, you know, made sloppy editing choices. It doesn't live up to you know standards for mixing, and and all that. Um, You're talking and, you about know, there Doom Eternal, of... right? Yes, because I, I was reading the part related to the original Doom, where uh, no, no, this is this is Doom Eternal. So the the parts in the original Doom that stood out to me were they had taken his music and basically like slashed like half of them, and were like, no, we don't want these. We're gonna like take these whatever they paid him for the the parts that they said they wanted and then when the album released for the yes. the first game they had used many of the songs they had said they wouldn't and he had not he paid said, him for yeah, it he says he'd used almost all of it yes. he'd used almost all of his music it and only had only paid for paid him for only half of it yeah but say it's like at one point yeah he went unpaid for 11 months um but that like the game lacked direction as to what kind of levels or environments um, you know that that were going to be laid so that you know he could design the you know the tracks that were necessary. Um, and you know just like had to you know resort to crunch when they were like he would he like and he even like was like you know tried to you know meet them you know more than halfway you know to be like let's like make some kind of like standard kind of things that could maybe fit multiple things and then once you guys kind of yeah, nail down them together what there's... you want we could you know make them more more individualized and all that and they're like no. No, we're not going to do that. Um, but there's just a whole lot of you know, disingenuous behavior going on in the part of, uh, in particular, this guy, Marty Stratton and, and you know, the the management at id Software. Like, you know, they had, like, agreed to some way of releasing the, the OST. And, like, there's also drama involved with that. It's, like, that they didn't, like, tell him that they were going to do that until, like, a month before release. And intended the intended release of the game and then like they eventually yeah told him about that he was like he he struggled to actually get a contract for it and then found out that they had been you know doing a alternate version of it as well for six months prior without telling him um all sorts of stuff all sorts of fuckery going on but you know there's there's a whole level of these things going on where it's just all again paints uh, you know, it's software and management in a terrible light, but this is the part that really stuck out to me. Um, and it's uh, shows where you know the real demonology at work here. Uh, there's a you know, a major part of the story is where the dispute was taken to Reddit and lawyers had to get involved because Marty Stratton posted uh, uh, posted something that Gordon claims was full of lies and used disinformation and innuendo to unfairly blame him for the failure of the soundtrack the soundtrack because again when it first released there were a lot of fans who were not pleased and you know he rightfully claims that 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 post severely impacted both his professional and personal reputation um he tried to get lawyers to you know uh get him to take it down the guy refused um eventually uh a sympathetic reddit mod you know one who's sympathetic to gordon took it down independently this apparently ended any hope of reaching any type of agreement as Stratton's lawyers allegedly told Gordon that Stratton was greatly offended <laughs> and furious over the post's removal and made it clear in the strongest terms that an amicable resolution would be impossible. The, I guess that's the only the it's only thing that you could it. yeah that you could give to Stratton is that he is a a dedicated poster <laughs> posters posters pride. Oh God damn. It is oh. it's like 
the fact that yeah it got taken taken to reddit and that's where it is you know that you know that this guy's evil yeah no offense matt also respect to that man. i also drink milk <laughs> yeah which we all which we all know means you're yeah you're a degenerate i just walk uh, around yeah, carrying yeah. A, uh, an air cylinder and a cattle uh <laughs> The cattle prod, yeah. Um, solidarity with Mick Gordon. The man still has not been paid for all his work. So pay that man fucking what ridiculous. he's due. Yeah, because uh, like the Doom One soundtrack is a fucking monster. It made the Stuff it makes bangs. the game. Like if yeah. No, the the music to Doom as a franchise, yeah, hundred you know, percent is, is is so pivotal to the whole experience. Like you don't even um, have to like metal music to just fucking rock out to yeah so yep we we stand firmly in solidarity with mick gordon there it is clear who is the villain it's uh, marty stratton one. hey marty yeah. if you're listening fuck you yeah uh, <laughs> yeah get fucked bozo um hopefully that guy never gets a fucking job again um not mick gordon i hope he gets all the <laughs> i hope he gets all the work yeah. i hope stratton gets fucking demoted and made a fucking PA or something. Um, he can become uh, a full time poster like he really wants. Yeah, that's truly where his where his uh, you know his passions lie. So I can respect that. I could absolutely respect that. Yeah, if he just you know stuck to posting, stick to posting. <laughs> Alrighty, that's all I got for today. Um, time for plugs. Folks, you can check us out on Twitch at twitch.tv slash campaign comrades for however long the lay hell site still exists. You can find <laughs> us on Twitter at Camcom pod. Uh, although you can also follow, you know, maybe we'll my, like if, if it does go bankrupt in one day that the, we can't log in anymore. Um, maybe I guess find us on Instagram and we'll take to posting there, I guess. I don't <laughs> fucking know. Uh, uh, I have no fucking idea. We have no intentions of leaving Twitter or anything. We're barely active there. We need to still be more like right as we're yeah, trying to get more active on Twitter. It's about to ready to implode. So I feel somewhat okay with, you know, maybe toning it back a little bit. We're not paying um, for a blue check mark. So, oh, fuck. No. <laughs> fuck no. Only if we have a good idea of how to make fun of Elon. That's yeah. the only, that's the only way we'll do it. Um, Mike's not here, so he gets no plug for his TCG <laughs> player. Oh. Gotta be, gotta be here. Yeah, gotta be here to get it. Um, but uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, if you enjoy the content, please, uh, you know, give us a review on your favorite podcast app. It really helps out, as Andrew will always say. Five stars only, though. Anything else? Any complaints? Keep to yourself. <laughs> Actually, no. Change that. If you're listening to this and have a complaint, catch us on Twitch. Meet us in chat and tell us your complaint. Yeah, sure. Tell us sure, why yeah. you're mad. Far- Come yell at us. Yeah. Come yell yeah. at Farm- us. Farming engagement. Real content brain right there. Respect. Uh, all right. But uh, we will see you later. Bye-bye. Bye. Peace.